Dream Chaser is a modern space plane getting close to its main flight. The initial variant is an uncrewed version that will carry cargo to the International Space Station and dispose of trash on its way back. As its mission gets even closer, Sierra Space has begun training both mission controllers and even astronauts on future ISS missions to understand how to complete this mission. This maiden flight is a demonstration mission and will be the first test of some of Dream Chaser's different features. Between launch and landing, this mission includes a long list of different objectives and milestones that if met will determine how well the spacecraft performed and what its future may look like. Sierra Space has confirmed work on a crewed variant which will likely be the future of this platform. This being said, until an uncrewed variant has flown successfully multiple times, we won't see crew using Dream Chaser to get into LEO and back. Here we'll go more in depth into the first mission's flight profile, new launch date info, the importance of this mission, and more. Dream Chaser is only a spacecraft, not a launch vehicle, so it needs some help in order to reach orbit. For this maiden flight, the launch vehicle is United Launch Alliance's brand new Vulcan Centaur. This rocket was supposed to attempt its maiden flight a long time ago, but has run into a few different delays. While some of the initial testing went well, the upper stage of the rocket is currently in the company's factory undergoing necessary upgrades. In relation to Dream Chaser, the first mission is meant to happen on the second Vulcan flight, which could cause some more delays. Either way, this is the current plan for Tenacity's maiden flight. In this case, once the vehicle arrives at the site, it will integrate with Vulcan. At this stage, Dream Chaser will have its wings folded in, allowing it to fit within Vulcan's pharynx. In addition, the space plane will be elevated by the Shooting Star Service Module, which will also be used for this first test flight. Not only does it carry cargo, but the Shooting Star Module also includes solar panels that supply up to 6 kilowatts of electrical power. It even supplies active and passive thermal management, provides Dream Chaser translation and rotation capability via six mounted thrusters, and supports berthing or docking in different configurations to the ISS. Once on the launch pad, Vulcan will undergo a series of checks to make sure everything is ready for launch. Finally, the two BE-4 engines will ignite in addition to some SRBs with Vulcan lifting off. Not long after the rocket takes off, the boosters will be expended and the main BE-4 engines will cut off. The two stages will then separate and the upper stage will ignite its two RL-10C engines. The payload fairings will eventually jettison, revealing tenacity in its shooting star module. At this point, the spacecraft will detach from the upper stage and then unfold its wings. Between then and berthing with the ISS, the space plane will use its various thrusters to position itself on the exact path. The main run initializes at 119 kilometers below and behind the ISS. Through a carefully choreographed set of burns, Dream Chaser will approach and intercept the Earth radius vector directly below the ISS. With built-in holds at several points along the way, Dream Chaser will gradually climb up to a capture point that is 11.5 meters below the space station's Japanese experiment module. When Dream Chaser is at the capture point, the ISS crew moves the robot arm into position and grapples the spacecraft. This process can take approximately 6 hours from start to finish in training simulations, and in most cases is not problem free. Once attached, crews on the ground and in the station will make sure everything looks good before they open the hatch and access the cargo. Years ago, it was announced that an expendable shooting star cargo module would be part of the Dream Chaser cargo system for CRS-2 flights. The module is a long attachment to Dream Chaser that will allow the spacecraft to carry an additional 10,000 pounds or 4,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the ISS. This means that Tenacity will have quite a lot of cargo aboard. Likely not the full capacity, but enough to support the station and its astronauts. Tenacity is expected to stay docked with the ISS for around 2-3 to three months before it's time to leave. The Shooting Star module also supports the disposal of unwanted cargo by burning up upon re-entry. When this is complete and the hatch is closed, Dream Chaser Tenacity will detach from the station and then separate from its Shooting Star module. At this point, Dream Chaser will attempt one of the most difficult mission objectives during re-entry. Assuming everything goes well, it will make it through the atmosphere in one piece and begin descending. Finally, Tenacity will attempt a landing on a runway to complete the first Dream Chaser CRS-2 cargo mission. Before any part of that mission profile can take place, a few things need to happen. This includes the first Vulcan successfully lifting off and Sierra Space finishing Dream Chaser Tenacity. It's been quite a long time since the company gave us an update on the exact progress of Tenacity. The last time we saw the space plane, they were attaching the thermal tiles. This being said, all the way back in January of this year, the company was quoted saying, The first Dream Chaser, Tenacity, is nearing completion and will subsequently ship to NASA's Neil Armstrong test facility in Cleveland, Ohio, for final space environmental testing ahead of its first mission to the ISS later this year. By now it seems likely that Vulcan will be the factor responsible for any delays to come. While we don't have access to an official, accurate launch timeline for the space plane, we got a hint from the company in a recent report. Over the last few days, Sierra Space hosted its third official training of NASA astronauts to learn the inner workings of Dream Chaser. 
The three astronauts are members of the upcoming NASA SpaceX Crew-8 mission to the International Space Station, which is currently slated to launch no earlier than February 2024. Sierra Space was quoted saying, During their planned six-month stay, Dream Chaser is scheduled to make its maiden voyage to deliver cargo to the ISS as part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Services 2 or CRS-2 contract. Closer toward the middle of next year is when we could see Dream Chaser docked to the station. We are pleased to train the crew that will be on board the International Space Station for Dream Chaser's first cargo resupply mission, said Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss. These astronauts underwent an extensive training curriculum to prepare them for how to interact with our space plane when it bursts with the ISS. We are honored to join NASA's cargo resupply team, they said. During this latest set of training, the astronauts received a full briefing on Dream Chaser. Topics covered included systems identification and function, mission profiles from launch to rendezvous to reentry and landing, crew interfaces and operations, i.e. types of cargo, how to load and unload, etc. The astronauts ended part one with a much deeper understanding of Dream Chaser's hardware once it's birthed with the International Space Station. They also learned some of the required actions as Dream Chaser makes its approach and officially bursts with the International Space Station. Topics included a full review of the timeline, profile, and procedural operations of the high-level system configuration involved in this critical part of the mission. It's important to point out, in relation to the future schedule of Dream Chaser, the early last month Sierra Space was training some of Crew-7. This launch will obviously take place before Crew-8, and highlights that Sierra Space really is not exactly sure when Dream Chaser will dock based on a few delays. At the time, they were quoted saying, Crew-7 might be the team on board the ISS when Dream Chaser bursts with the station for the first time. In reality, it will likely just come down to Vulcan as far as launch delays and when this first mission lifts off. Due to the fact that Dream Chaser will launch on the second Vulcan mission and not the first, they need the main Vulcan and its various payloads to successfully lift off first. ULA CEO Tori Bruno recently gave an update and highlighted that the upper stage repairs are underway and making fast progress. He also expressed his confidence in launching the first Vulcan this year. Back in 2019, it was announced that all six Dream Chaser CRS-2 flights would be carried into orbit by ULA's Vulcan launch vehicle, with the first Dream Chaser flight being the second Vulcan flight in late 2021. Obviously, some things have changed since then, however, a lot of future flights still plan to use a Vulcan. Ideally, after these initial delays, Vulcan will be capable of launching on time for the foreseeable future. Dream Chaser has somewhat of a complex flight profile on its first mission to the ISS. This involves the initial launch on Vulcan, rendezvousing with the station, cargo delivery, and Earth reentry, just to name a few. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.